One of the most important concepts in linear algebra is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Because the eigenvalues and eigenvectors will allow us to decompose a matrix and reduce the number of dimensions without losing the information contained within those matrices. Recall that a covariance matrix represents the relationship between variables. And this is one of the most fundamental things in statistics, the covariance matrix. It is the most important thing that you need to know. So a data set with 40 variables would yield a 40 by 40 covariance matrix. Unfortunately, it's really impractical to work with 40 dimensions, 40 variables, and get some meaningful insights. So normally we do them one at a time. But data mining and multivariate analysis techniques rely heavily on reducing the number of dimensions. If we could reduce in some manner the number of dimensions to something more manageable, it would significantly help our analysis. And this is the concept of dimension reduction. And we'll do this using the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's suppose that we have a matrix, an M by M matrix, called A. Now, we can say that lambda is an eigenvalue of A if there exists a non-zero vector nu, that's the Greek letter nu, N-U, such that the matrix A is multiplied by nu, and it equals that lambda times that nu. Now that's an interesting concept because we can see that we've now converted that matrix into two components, a vector and a scalar. And since this is equivalence, we haven't lost any information. So the vector nu is said to be an eigenvector of A corresponding to the eigenvalue of lambda. So each eigenvector that we find will have a eigenvalue associated with it. Now, how do we find the eigenvalues? Mathematically, we would do it by solving this equation. We take the determinant of A minus lambda i. Remember, i is the identity matrix. And if we can solve this equation, where it equals 0, if we can find that lambda, then we can find a corresponding eigenvector that will give us our eigenvalue eigenvector pair. So that's what we have here. If nu is an eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda, then A times nu minus lambda times the identity matrix times nu will equal 0. And therefore, we end up with A minus lambda i times the vector equals 0. If there exists an inverse to that, then the trivial solution nu equals 0 is obtained. But when there does not exist the trivial solution, then there is, and there is no inverse, we end up with the determinant of A minus lambda i equals 0. So how does this work? Let's take an example. Let's say we have this covariance matrix, 2, 1, 1, 2. Now, if there exists an inverse of a minus lambda i, then the trivial solution of nu equals 0 is obtained. So we're not concerned in that case. But when there does not exist a trivial solution, there is no inverse, and therefore, the determinant of a minus lambda i will equal 0. And that means we can obtain a vector nu which satisfies the equation a times nu minus lambda i nu equals 0. So here we have a vector nu multiplied by a. We have our matrix A, 2, 1, 1, 2, multiplied by 0 0.0707168, and then 0 0.0707168. So that nu is a vector. When we multiply those two together, we get 2.12132 as a vector. So therefore, our eigenvector, nu, is 0 0.0707168. So notice, A times nu is a 2 by 1 matrix. Well, how does this relate to the original matrix? If we have A times nu, and we said originally that it would equal lambda times nu, the question is, can we find a lambda that we can multiply by nu to give us that 2.1232? And the answer is yes. So recall from the previous slide that we did A times nu, which was the matrix 2112 times the eigenvector 0 0.0707168 with another 0 0.0707168. This equals the vector 2.12132, 2.12132. 
if we take that eigenvector 2.1232 if we take that eigenvector 0 0.0707168 and 0.707168 can we find a lambda that we can multiply to get us that same value and the answer is yes it's three so because we found this solution for lambda and nu we can reduce the matrix a which is a two by two matrix to a scalar times an eigenvector which is a two by one matrix so instead of two dimensions we're now dealing with only one dimension the eigenvalues of a covariance matrix are non-negative always so if lambda is an eigenvalue of the covariance matrix then sigma times nu is equal to lambda times nu where nu is that corresponding eigenvector to lambda so we also need to note that if we have a covariance matrix that's two by two there will be two solutions for the eigenvector eigenvalue problem so if you have a matrix with four dimensions you will have four solutions to this equation so you'll have four eigenvectors and four eigenvalues and they will correspond to each other now in r this is pretty simple to do extending the example that we had before we have our covariance matrix here to the right where we have two one one two now in r to get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors we'll use the function called eigen so in r let's say we have this matrix a which is matrix c vector two one one two and row equals two by row equals true so a is now that two one one two two by two matrix when we do eigen a the result will give us the solutions to that eigenvalue eigenvector problem and we will have two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors the first eigenvalue will always be the largest eigenvalue so you can see here below we have a three and a one as the possible values for the eigenvalues the first eigenvalue will always be the largest and the eigenvectors are the columns of the result of the vectors object so we see below we have the vectors we have the first column which is the first eigenvector and the second column which is the second eigenvector